The Gamer's Experience. I'm your host, Phil Willis. Down here we have our co-host, Minu the Cat. And uh, boy, we're, we're here to talk about another game, right? The Gamer's Experience. It's more than a game review, less than a let's play. It's me sharing my experience of playing my favorite PC games. This is a top 100 count in chronological order, not from best to worst. My 100 favorite PC games. And number six on the list is Quest for Glory. Uh, I believe it's called Heroes Quest back in the day, but they later changed the name uh, to Quest for Glory due to some copyright issues. And uh, all the sequels after the first one were called Quest for Glory. The original Quest for Glory game uh, on the PC was developed and published by Sierra Entertainment, and it was uh, released around March 1989. Now, uh, we've, uh, you know, I've shown you a, a number of games so far, and this is another one uh, similar to uh, like Pirates and Wybarm that is a hybrid of a couple of different. Um, genres put together you know we, we tend to think that the whole genre blending thing is some new phenomenon from the last decade that has just grown stronger and stronger no no actually it has its roots all the way back in the 80s as soon as they could start blending genres together they did and quest for glory blends the the uh, adventure genre the point and click adventure genre or back then text <laughs> um, point and text text and point no just text like Leisure Suit Larry, which was a couple of shows ago. I showed you all Leisure Suit Larry too. This uh, uh, Quest for Glory took those Sierra style text based, uh, uh, graphic based, I should say, uh, adventure games and blended it with strong RPG mechanics such as statistics and leveling, in a manner of speaking, and you know, combat with monsters, inventory management, uh, basically fantasy style. Um, RPGs and it blended those together. So this was my very first experience of having something that blended those two particular uh, genres together. And that's what we're going to do today. The the game had originally came out in EGA and then it was re-released -re in VGA and there's some distinct differences. I played the EGA one. We're going to start off with that, but then I do think we're going to shift to the VGA one, which will be interesting because I've not really spent more than a few minutes with the, with the VGA remake just to make sure that it works. I have spent a lot of time with the original game, maybe not as much as some people, but I have, I have spent a number of hours in it uh, back in the uh, 90s, and now uh, I, I played it again a couple of years, uh, just a couple of years ago when it came out on GOG. If I haven't mentioned this before, and I have, but I'm going to mention it again. GOG is an awesome place uh, to get these games, and this is yet another game that you can get right there on GOG.com. And we'll definitely be uh, showing you some more information of where you can find that uh, later. But we're going to get ready to dive into the game here in just a minute as I kind of get set up. But... This, uh, this, uh, this, uh, you know, very similar to Leisure Suit Larry. Now, I watched my mom play Leisure Suit Larry, as I mentioned in that show. It wasn't really a game that I had played a lot of, but I would help her, help, uh, help her, you know, uh, try to guess what we were supposed to do next, and then help her in decoding the hint book with the red film. Quest, uh, Quest for Glory, though, was all, or, or Hero's Quest was all my adventure. You know, she didn't really play this one, she got it for me at my computer. And it was a really, really, really awesome choice because it did uh, because of those RPG elements. Uh, back in the day, those texts, uh, you know, the games that she was playing, the adventure games, I didn't find them super awesome. Playing with her in a in that setting where we're both working on it together was kind of fun, but on my own, it didn't really capture me too much. But Quest for Glory did partly because of the setting being a typical fantasy style setting, partly because of its humor. And partly um, because of the combat and the role-playing mechanics uh, underneath the hood. Hopefully I'll get to, get to show you a fight uh, in both games. We'll see how they both uh, stack up with each other because one of the things I remember most is, is how the combat look. Uh, we'll hopefully get to show you rather than tell you a whole bunch of that. But yeah, it took a lot of hours from me 
played a, played a lot of hours. So I think my mom forgetting this one for me. Once I had found out GOG had released uh, this game, uh, not to mention the whole series, part of a bundle, I, I simply had to have it and relive some of those uh, childhood memories. And it's awesome that these games from MS-DOS 5.0 days uh, work just fine in Windows uh, 7 and 10, thanks to DOSBox and the guys at GOG who do all the tweaking underneath the hood. This stuff pretty much runs pretty flawlessly, so I definitely thank them for that. So let's see if we can... We can well, before we fire up the game, I always like to show... Um, I like to show some of the um, manuals and the such, and we do have some good manuals on this. So we're going to flip over to my monitor here for a minute. See, we got some Quest for Glory information up there. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the uh, manuals here. One of the books that came with was the famous Adventurous Correspondence School. And uh, it's it's very, very humorous. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and read this opening here just in case you can't see it. So, you want to be a hero. Take this simple one-minute test to see if you have the right stuff to become a student of the famous Adventures Correspond School for Heroes. You're having a dinner with a powerful and influential wizard, and he starts to make rude remarks about muscle brain adventures. Do you A kill the wizard and upset the magical balance of the entire universe by breaking his spell preventing the eruption of the volcano that spews lava over the peaceful nearby town or b ignore his remarks and pass the salt you'd be surprised how many would-be heroes choose option a but here at the famous adventurers correspond school for heroes we know that the correct response is of course c you too can become a useful and productive member of the hero community by taking this simple course in how to be a hero. And you gotta love this very nicely hand-drawn picture of various like wizard and dragon and stuff looking over this dude's shoulder as he's on his computer. So it goes about uh, just giving you some really great advice, uh, done a little bit tongue-in-cheek with some humor. And one of the cool things about this game is that there are three classes, uh, the fighter, the wizard, and the thief. And each one gives you um, a different uh, a different gaming experience. And as you can imagine, we, with Leader Suit Larry, as we saw that there were puzzles to be solved. There's certain things the game's looking for to give you points, and that you have to do in order to complete the game. Uh, with Quest for Glory, there's not one but three really main ways to get through the game based on the class that you choose. Uh, it will totally dictate on how you approach problems. If there's a cat up in a tree. If you're a fighter, you might cut the tree down to get the cat down. If you're a thief, you might climb up the tree and rescue the cat that way. And if you're a wizard, you simply cast a spell to retrieve the cat from the top of the tree. So, uh, yeah, it, it all depends on the on the class that you play. It was one of the things that made this game really, really awesome. Let's see if we can find something else to show you. We also have uh, the... Quest for Glory 1 instruction book. Now this looks different than the one I have because uh, this looks like it's from the VGA uh, remake. But uh, got, got, uh, got some uh, good information uh, in here for you. Uh, some tips about how to make your character. And uh, yeah, this definitely is from the VGA remake. And uh, it, it feels a little sparse to me. I would highly recommend, uh, if you want to do it right, uh, go ahead and take the time and read a fact. They're all over the internet, and I'll be using one if I get stuck today. But one of one of the one of the really interesting and cool things about this game is that it really puts you into the role of, of playing a hero. And we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get the uh, the game started here. So I'm gonna see if I can get at least. We're gonna start with the VGA, and uh, hopefully the sound won't uh, blast my eardrums and your eardrums. Because the v or the EGA, the original game, used IBM sound, which is that one note at a time sound that feels to me a lot like nails across a chalkboard. It's not the, the best uh, best sound in the world. Definitely should not be played with like the headphones on and turned up. It's something best turned down while you're watching television. But we'll see if we can't get this uh we can't get this party started right. So let's uh, open up our. GOG account here and let me find our quest for glory game 
and we'll go ahead and play it and get that started and this will just take just a minute as it normally does to get this properly set up on the screen here and then we're gonna set up our recording software to put me into a tiny little corner rare boys and girls lots of hard people working on this game do not make illegal uh, copies so uh, again as I mentioned before this was a big deal back in the day uh, but we would make backups because those discs would go bad at any point in time so if you if the game would allow me to copy it I, I would copy it and I would play off the copy of course there was always a temptation just to give those to your friends of course I like how it gives you that and then it says oh by the way you will need the information contained in the printed documentation to successfully complete this game in other words it's not just the law it's a good idea aha not really sure where that comes in at but I'm afraid I'll, I'll find out here so uh, no music blasting through my ears just yet I suppose that's good uh, hmm. anyways uh, so there's an introduction you start a new hero let's look at the introduction shall we well, there's the music I'm looking for turn that down on my windows there it's actually pretty good animation for that time there That's how he looks in combat. Scary little guy. Is that the end of our introduction? Might be. Ooh. Actually, it sounds more like Tandy sound. So here's the uh, the character uh, creation screen. Actually, the sound's not bad. I was thinking it was straight up IBM sound, but uh, that might be closer to the AdLib soundboard or, or possibly the Tandy three board sound going on there. Uh, so that's not that's not as bad as I maybe I was thinking of something else there. So we're just for the sake of uh, of um, being able to get right into the game and showing you some of the combat stuff. I'm gonna pick a, pick a fight or. And it's just like a typical RPG. You got stats to, to pump into, and there's no there's no experience levels. It it, uh, it really kind of works on uh, kind of the same premises like um, the Sega series of games, uh, the Saga Frontiers or uh, uh, Romancing Saga games, where you have ability uh, you have ability scores and then you have skill scores, and they essentially go up through practice and use. So there'll be some things you're kind of doing there in the and the game a little bit uh, over and over again. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, an FAQ will explain more what each of these does, but uh, I'm just going to go with my gut on this because we're just playing uh, for the sake of showing the game here. Stealth picking locks, throwing, a lot of the stuff is for, I wonder if climbing going to come into handy though. Is a, is a, whoa, five points, I guess, because it's a cross class skill maybe. Wow, or maybe it's the first five points are the most expensive points. Interesting. Oh, that's fun. Maybe I didn't watch your climb anyways. I do want some points in strength, which apparently helps out the old hit points as well as uh, vitality. So we'll, we'll stick with that. Actually, uh, is that EGA? It almost looks VGA. This seems like a quiet little town. On the porch ahead of you are two people. The standing one is large, rather ugly, and playing with a yo-yo. The seated person smoking a pipe looks like he might be the sheriff. The man with the pipe greets you. Welcome to our town. You are lucky to have made a town from the mountains uh, before the snow blocked the pass again. It's getting pretty dangerous outside of town, I understand. Many monsters have been trapped around here with the late snow. Between them and the brigands, we could certainly use a hero around here. 
I am Sheriff Schultz Meistersen, and this is Otto Van Goon, my assistant. What do you call yourself? Good luck in your quest, Phil. So pretty cool uh, animation for definitely back in the day. Kind of plenty going on there. We're going to jump in the end here and see how this looks on the inside. Welcome, welcome, traveler, to the hero's tale in... I am Shamin at your service. May you find what you seek here. Mm. Yeah, a little music going on there. Oops. Clicked outside the box. So you use the arrow keys to move around, or you can just click where you want to go. And the, 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 so this is the, this is, uh, I forget what the name of the town is, Spielsburg, I believe. Plenty to do here. I like the magic guild. There's that big eye staring at you. There's an old lady rocking in the chair. And for most things in life, you have to use text commands. Ooh, fiery. Apparently the old woman's sleeping. And I believe this is the fighter's guild over here. The Adventures Guild Hall reminds you of the one in your hometown. The traditional moose head and other stuffed monsters, Saurus, Troll, Griffin, Dragon, Cheetar, and its terrible Antwerp adorn the walls. You see the registration book on the desk, and the bulletin board is full of job listings. The man seated by the fire must be the guild master. He is snoring. One of the things you can do in these games, if they move in a little slow for you, is you can hit the plus and minus sign to make it go faster and slower. I believe that's also in the menu. No one responds. I wonder if I can wake them. Oh yeah, there you go. Ugh, I was so busy I didn't know you should come in. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, he's busy sleeping. It is so seldom that we have new adventures here. Most people think this valley is cursed. This is, of course, where an adventurer can find out where there is a need for someone brave and courageous. There are jobs on the bulletin board over there. Looks pretty normal. Let's see. I don't know if it's... There we go. Oh, look, we got little jobs. Reward for the return of a lost ring. Get the healer. Poster is rather dusty and faded. The picture is a small child with braids. Reward of 50 gold coins for the safe return of Elsa von Spielberg. Inquire at the gates. So there's other jobs you can look and do here in true RPG fashion. So let's see if we can uh, walk out here and find something to just show you what the combat looks like. But uh, it's pretty deep. Lots of, lots of people to chat with. Like any good point-and-click adventure game, there are problems to be solved as well. I think that's a friendly reminder to save the game. Uh-oh, my song stopped because I left. So right now I'm just, uh, just want to show you combat here and just because uh, this uh, back in 1989 this was this was big stuff it usually will happen is as you're walking around um, a monster will just start approaching you and hopefully it's something as small as a goblin because some of these monsters get very ferocious da, 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 da. here monster Like there's a monster right there. Hostile intent is evident. You prepare for battle. Now, here's what's really cool is you get this like behind the back um, look at the combat there. It's over with that quickly. Um, I don't recall the the finer points of of, of how to do that battle, but uh, it's using the number keypad. And 
you always want to make sure, just like in any good RPG, you loot the body or, or whatever. I forget what the exact command is. So let's say search. There we go. Search your opponent. Aha! Go silver. Silver very important. Uh, let's see here. Forget how you see your statistics. File, restore game, cast spell, pause game, aha, character sheet, control S. So our intelligence has gone up. The red numbers show you what's gone up. So uh, my intelligence has gone up, uh, vitality has gone up from fighting, luck has gone up, uh, which in turn has increased, uh, the vitality going up has increased my health points and stamina maximums. There is experience you see listed there. Uh, I believe I remember seeing in the FAQ because there is no levels, right? So what's the point of the experience? Uh, I remember one of the FAQs I read it said but essentially that when the experience gets to a thousand, your monsters get tougher. So, yay. But yeah, as you do things in the game, your your stats go up. So that's pretty cool. Also note that my health is is at fourteen out thirty six now. It doesn't automatically go up, so you got to find uh, ways to heal yourself. I don't remember exactly what those are off the top. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-oh, dinosaur. Oof. This probably doesn't end well for me. Ah, oh, no! So when you died, ask if you want to restore or whatever. Good place to stop. But I just wanted to show you um, how that combat looked, and you can kind of see right there, it's kind of frozen on the screen, uh, just how cool that graphic was. Uh, with the camera behind your back. Granted, it ran all of two frames per second or so, but it, you know, for that, that you know, for those days, having such a detailed graphic of a of a monster. I mean, there was dungeon crawlers and such that would put a picture of the monsters in front of you, and your party was just a bunch of stats at the bottom. Uh, and then there was the gold box games that I showed you that would sometimes put a picture of the monster before they went to the the grid base, and those 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 pictures could be a bit detailed. But I think you find the the most amount of detail right there uh they're just huge graphic sprites whatever you want to call them and uh, it's done pretty well though a bit slow you can uh, block with the shield and you'll learn to block their attacks and parry and attack and parry and attack of course the best spell in the game is the save and reload spell you'll be using that a lot so <laughs> let's see if we can uh, now load up the vga uh, version and you can see what a vast difference a few years can make We'll get that stuck into the corner. There we go. Oops. Sorry. Wrong button. Put it back on there. I'm trying to. <laughs> so very much the same warning that you saw in the in the original game. Much more soothing sounds. Make sure this is turned up here for you. Sierra. See the introduction on this one. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Go ahead and turn that down a bit. And I guess we'll just jump into it. Um, I guess once you start the entry, you can't get out? Oh, whoa, there we go. Guess I went right into start a game.
So very, as you can see, the exact same stats from the original game there. This is the exact same system it looks like. As you can see, a lot more detail in animation, of course. This seems like a quiet little town on the porch ahead of you are two people. The standing one is large, rather ugly, and playing with a yo-yo. The seated person smoking the pipe looks like he might be the sheriff. Man with the pipe greets you. Welcome to our town. You are lucky to have made it down for the mountains before the snow blocked the pass again. It's gotten pretty dangerous outside of town, I understand. Many monsters have been trapped around here with the late snow. Between them and the brigands, we could certainly use a hero around here. I am Sheriff Schultz Meisterson. This is Otto Van Goon, my assistant. Good luck to you in your quest. Now... One of the big differences, aside from the graphical uh, and overhaul, is that a lot of this is mouse-driven. In fact, I don't even think you can type in commands on this one. Um, you can use the right mouse button to switch between common commands, like talk, walk, look. Um, you can do all of that. So I can look up here, uh, whoops, and use the eyeball and says, oh, this is the hero's tail in. Um, in fact, let's walk into that in real fast because we saw that in the, uh, the other version so we can see what it looks like here. And we'll open up the door with the hand symbol. And a lot more detail uh, inside the inn here. Welcome, welcome, traveler, to the Hero's Tale Inn. I'm Shamin at your service. May you find what you seek here. Hmm. Let's see here. All right, not trying to touch anything. I'm trying to walk out now. Thank you. And then if we walk over here, now there is there is probably one small issue I have with the VGA, you know, graphics. And I saw this a bit with some of the other VGA remakes at the time, or VGA games, pretty much, is they have more colors and stuff. But sometimes they they, uh, you know, they lack some of the detail now. This one has, you know, obviously it the scene looks a lot better because it's it's more of an isometric presentation instead of that flat. Here's the storefront and here's the guild hall over here on the side. Um, but like this eyeball, I can't even like the other one. It was clear that there was an eyeball, you know, following you around. This one's a little bit harder to make out, um, and that sign back at the end was harder to make out. Whereas in the other game, it was pretty clear cut. Not a big deal. Um, I still prefer these graphics overall. There's that old sleeping lady. I'm sure if we just walk over here or handle that door, we can speed this up a little bit. Plus and minus are your friend. The Avenger Gill Hall reminds you of the one in your hometown, the traditional Moosehead and the other stuffed monsters, Saurus, Troll, Griffin, Dragons, Cheetar, and the terrible Anthorp adorn the walls. You see a registration book on the table and the bulletin board job are full of job listings. The man seated near the window must be the guildmaster. He is snoring. So we can go over here. And we can look at this. And here's those job postings. Reads pretty much the uh, the same. Now we had to wake him before. Let's see what we do this time. Well, we don't have to type in the wake command. Hawk, I was so busy. They didn't know you come in. Welcome, welcome. It is so seldom that we have new adventurers here. Most people think this valley is cursed. Ugh, I was busy. Oh, we already said that. So, in the other game, you have to type out exactly what kind of questions you're asking and the such. Like, ask about Guildhall. You have to type that out. Ask about Guildhall. Here, it gives you a list. So, it definitely makes the game a lot more accessible and, and easier to figure out. It's just easier overall to, to figure out the puzzles and solve this, um, at least the first appearance here. 
Because I know with the original game, I had to type all that stuff out. Not that it was super hard to figure out. Um, especially nowadays with the fact, none of this is really that difficult. But, uh, you know, there's a lot more to this town. You go up here, I believe the shopkeepers are up here. Yep. So you can buy, you know, there, there is food uh, that you have to buy because you got to keep yourself fed. And you need to rest, so you want to keep track of the, the time. All kinds of quests to do and such, but uh, let's go out into the wild for a minute. Oops, kind of losing control of where I'm walking there. And, and let's save. I believe it's... Oops, no, no, I don't want to walk. I just want to save. I believe it's this button right here. Now we're going to walk to the south. I'm walk outside here. The breeze is cool, but you feel a sh... Oh, that kind of nice music here. You feel a shiver deeper than the cold. You are really on your own now in a very dangerous place. Yeah, we know how dangerous the place can get, that's for sure. Died in the last game. We're gonna walk to see if we can find something. That'll probably kick our ass. Hmm. Kind of wonder if I just stand here if something will come out at me. Yeah, he looks real brave, doesn't he? Yeah, those dinosaurs. Oh, whoa, 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 there's something. He'll probably follow me here. Yeah, they will chase you down screen after screen. They don't care. So we got more of an isometric thing going on here. not really sure what I was doing there and and you know for all of its improved graphics my initial impression there is that the combat doesn't have that many more frames of animation in fact it might be the same two and a half frames per second um, less detail because it's more of an isometric and set it behind the shoulder so that's a, that's a little disappointing but uh, easier to search the opponent you don't have to type in search you just go ahead and look at them let's see is it inventory or control okay, there we go so as we can see there we have some statistics going up just like from before agility vitality luck yeah from that uh, that fight and health is a bit low at 22 out of 38 I wonder if you can heal by eating the apple so I think I have some food what's this look at this you have five food rations so if I eat that, can I eat it? Question mark. Drop. What about this? I think I just pointed myself. The rations are tasteless but filling. So now, 22. Hmm. I think my stamina went up a little bit. Apparently eating doesn't solve all your problems. forget how to heal. I should look that up in a fact. Probably a, probably a potion or something that costs an arm and a leg. The firstborn. You can use the number keypad to move around as long as your icon is on the walking man there. The only problem with the games is when they try to be hybrids is they don't necessarily do any one thing too well. I think the point and click adventures uh, part of this game is pretty strong regardless of which version you play, but that combat's a little on the rough side. There seems to be a fox north of the road. Oh, he looks hurt. Aw. Help me, brave and kind hero. Oh my gosh, it's talking. My foot is caught in this trap. If I had hands like yours instead of paws, I could free myself. Well, hell, you can talk. I'm surprised you don't have opposable thumbs. 
Please help me, brave and kind hero. Why not? You spring the trap. In exchange for your kindness, I'll give you some advice and a bit of information. First of all, it sometimes pays off to be polite, even to rude people. As for the abusing tidbit, Baba Yaga put an enchantment on the Baron's daughter some years back. To break the spell, you need to talk to the Dryad. Au revoir, tata for now, be seeing you. Hmm. Uh oh, I clicked on it. You pick up a full few small rocks. Oh yeah, you could throw rocks. That's a good way to get your throwing skill up. Mm. Let's see if I can throw them at something. So, let me see if this helps out. Or I'm throwing them at this tree. And... My throwing is still 10. Now you have to have a target to throw them at. I'll pick up more rocks. There we go. Aha! See, my throwing's going up to 11. So you can practice with your character like that. You can get certain skills up. Throwing uh, can be useful for daggers, for attacking a distance and softening up an enemy before he gets close to you. But you want to have your throwing skill up before you waste too many daggers that way. So if you go in the end, let's let's do back to the story for just a little bit, show you a little bit more of that before we close out. Now you've seen the combat. But like this is a great place to start right here. If you sit here, well first we're gonna talk to him a little bit. Very nice room, very soft beds, finest in town, only five silvers a night. Very good food, very good drink, finest in town. Sit, rest, and you'll be served by my Shima. My friend Abdullah is recovering from his robbery last week. He should be here around supper time, so that's a clue. If we come back here at night, I bet you we can see his friend. Alas, the brigand stole all of Abdullah's wealth and my own when they robbed his caravan. Now I'll be forced to stay in this wet, cold land. I hope to return to my homeland with my pro uh, with the prophets Abdullah, Shima, and I would make from the caravan. Now I fear we will remain here unless someone deals with the brigands and returns our stolen trade items. A land of golden sand and tall mountains, a city of tall buildings and winding streets, a place where Kata can bask in the sun as they sell things in the bazaar. It is our homeland and a place we long to be. A lot of these are foreshadowings of the uh, sequel games, I believe, from what I understand. In my homeland, a caravan is the only way to travel from city to city. So we should come back. Oops, keep doing that, don't I? So we should come back here at night. We got more puzzle points, as you can see up here, from doing a couple of things. But yeah, if you come over, you can sit down here, and his wife Kitty will come out to serve you. I like how he claps his little paws together. So cute. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish food or drink? So you can ask her questions as well. You have but to give Shima five silvers, and you may have the bed to dream upon. Now, in order to order stuff from her, you need to uh, pull out your gold. So, go into our inventory. I just use control I, or you can hit escape. I think you use the menus up there. I believe this is my money pouch. And then give that to her. You can buy yourself a meal, or you can buy yourself a drink. 
There's no need to know. Oh, I just ate the rations. Whoops. So we'll come back here later. Satisfying food, from what I understand. So that is, a, you know, Quest for Glory 1 in a nutshell. Uh, lots of NPCs to talk to and puzzles to figure out, quests to solve, finding the magic ring for the healer. Lots of mystical places, as you kind of uh, saw foreshadowed in there. It talks about Baba Yaga. So talk about getting in some of your Russian folklore and the such in there. It's really, really fun. It's got a great sense of humor, as you can see. Um, and uh, the combat is a bit rough, I won't lie. I mean, kind, of, kind of still kind of figuring out how the block and everything like that but uh it's not really the central focus of the game and uh you can pretty much just slam buttons and uh eventually you'll win against weaker monsters and once your stats go up you'll boom oh, he's getting crazy with that oh <laughs> but then you'll be able that's the funny humor in the game but then you'll be able to do that um against bigger monsters as your as your statistics go up and you get better equipment and such so it's a really really fun game and it's a it's a whole series and if you want to know more uh we did a whole uh series uh, we did a whole podcast about the whole series uh at rp gamer on our rpg backtrack podcast so we'll give you some more of that information in a minute let me go ahead and close this out here we'll save save and close what we'll do here is we'll take that guy away and we'll replace him with our desktop. Aha. All right. So, right here, we have Quest for Glory 1 through 5. So, if you're looking for this, you can see 12,000 12, votes, five stars out of five stars. Uh, it's a really, really fun series. And you can go and check it out, except for the last game or two. Uh, it's ten dollars, or you can wait for a sale. But uh, you can find GOG. Just go to GOG.com and look for Quest for Glory. It'll come right up, and you'll get all five games for one low price. So that's pretty cool. And while I'm thinking about it, uh, as I mentioned before, if you head over to RPGamer.com, and we'll zoom it a little bit, you head over right here to RPG Backtrack. That's the podcast that Mike Minky and I do and it's episode number 161 pass for glory uh where we talk about the entire quest for glory series and most of the other guys do most of the talk because they know the details about the future ones i only played the first one so it's a really good listen to if you would like to know more information before diving in but uh yeah quest for glory definitely definitely a fun series uh that you should go and you should check out uh, the animation, the humor, it's just all really, really neat. And, uh, you know, the graphic, the graphics were uh, ahead of its time, that's for sure. At least the combat and the such was very, very cool. Lots of uh, detail and love put into that. Um, didn't I don't think I ever did beat it. It was one of those games where the journey was kind of the, the, the highlight. Uh, but uh, with an FAQ, it really isn't too hard to get through uh, nowadays. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed what you saw here. If you did, leave me some comments, leave me a like. Feel free to hit me up at Twitter. I'm at JC Servant. You can write me at JC Servant at CyberLightComics.com. Head over to RPGamer.com to listen to our podcast. And if you would like to read all kinds of reviews, we got them on there. It's over at RPGamer.com. But thank you so much. And uh, I'll look forward to, I believe the next show might be Eye of the Beholder. Ooh. So until then, take care and have a fun time playing games.